Welcome back to East Side Reviews as I continue this little stroll down memory lane with the 90s Marvel animated series, and it brings us to Iron Man. So, <coughs> excuse me. Iron Man debuted in September of 1994 as part of a uh, what was called the Marvel Action Hour with the Fantastic Four series uh, from the 90s as well. Uh, I'm not reviewing it at this time. I might do that uh, a little bit later on. But the Iron Man series and this Action Hour, it would always begin with Stan Lee kind of setting the table for the day's adventures. Uh, tell us what's going to be going on. And then we would go into the shows. And uh, I hate to be a negative Nancy because I was a little bit negative with the Hulk series, but the first season of the Iron Man show was just not good at all. Um, the episodes in the first season of Iron Man, they all had the feel of like Power Rangers or Masters of the Universe. And again, I'm a big Power Rangers fan, uh, you know, one of the biggest of uh, all time, but it really did have a feel of a problem or a monster of the day style battle where some problem would occur, uh, usually caused by the Mandarin and Modoc and his little crew of cronies. And then Iron Man and his team fought based on Force Works, which is a, a, a team that was around during the 90s, but now is kind of irrelevant. No one's really heard of it. And they would solve the issue, they would fight, move on and only until later on in the season when we you know got towards the end there would be some two-part episodes but really a lot of these are just one-off things that happen uh season two is definitely a market improvement in terms of everything in terms of theme song it is excellent the adventures that we see and the stories are actually plotted out over multiple episodes things connect we get a little, uh, a couple of flashbacks. We get some things that actually do work. And I think season two is definitely a step up from season one. But like, um, with the exception of X-Men, this series was really short-lived. It only lasted 26 episodes for around uh, two years in 94 and 95. And so, yeah, or excuse me, 94 to 1996. So yeah, but getting onto this episode, we get the introduction of Iron Man and his crew. We have Iron Man voiced by Robert Hayes. Uh, oh, we have uh, War Machine and First Things First, rest in peace Uncle Phil, because he is voiced by James Avery. Uh, we have Ed Gilbert, he portrays the Mandarin as well as uh, Grey Gargoyle. Uh, we have Jim Cummings, uh, AKA Winnie the Pooh, he voices MODOK and Century. Uh, we, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we also have uh, Dorian, ooh, excuse me, Actually, I have to make a quick correction. James Avery only voices uh, War Machine for the first five episodes. He also voices Whirlwind uh, for the first 10 episodes and Black Lash for, uh, for, for both seasons. Uh, Dorian Harwood, he takes over the role of War Machine uh, from season, <clears throat> excuse me, from uh, episode six onwards. And he also takes over Whirlwind and Black Lash. So, yeah, they, they replaced one black dude with another for all those roles. Cool. Uh, John Riley, he voices Hawkeye, as well as the character Beetle, who is sort of a rival to Spider-Man, to Hawkeye. Uh, we also have a version of the Scarlet Witch in this series, uh, voiced first by Catherine Moffat, then by Jennifer Darling. Um, yeah, let, let's be completely honest. This is a weird version of the Scarlet Witch. Um, she's vaguely Eastern European, so she's a little bit like the MC version of the character, uh, but she's not like, she doesn't have the reality warping powers to the level that uh, that Wanda and the MCU has. Uh, Jennifer Hale, she voices uh, Spider-Woman, AKA Julia Carpenter. Um, and yeah, we, we have that uh, for the main characters on the show. Like I said, the Iron Man crew is based on Force Works. Uh, Force Works was a team of the comics that uh, came out of the ashes of the West Coast Avengers when they separated. And so it was Iron Man and War Machine and the character of Century, uh, as well as the uh, Julia Carpenter version of Spider-Woman. Um, and it is, to be quite honest with you, 
Um, the team, there's a reason why no one remembers the team. Uh, their goal wasn't just to prevent, to stop problems, but more important to prevent them from happening. And yeah, there, there's a reason why no one remembers what the hell Force Works was. As far as Iron Man in this initial episode, um, he's okay. Um, as well as all the other characters, they're, they're fine. They're, they're okay. Um, they're, there's nothing special to them. And like I said, the first season is kind of bad, but again, second season does pick up. Uh, the animation also picks up from season one to season two. Um, and something that doesn't occur in season two that I really don't like that happens in season one is when Iron Man's doing his whole little transformation, he's putting on a suit, he carries it around in a briefcase and he steps into it. And we get some repeating animation because Iron Man even when he's not wearing like a, his little business casual suit, he would always be shown entering the Iron Man armor with the business casual suit. Um, kind, of, kind of lazy with that. Uh, I get it. Saves time, saves some money repeating the animation, but again, a little, little lazy. And then for some reason, towards the end when he's putting on his helmet, it would turn into shitty 90s CGI and it was not, not good. Didn't look good then, doesn't look good now, and I'm glad that they kind of cut that out in season two. Overall, uh, yeah, it, this one was a little bit rough. Um, this does tie into the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, as well as the Hulk cartoon. Um, we, we did get a little bit of a um, kind of a uh, MCU-style crossover. Um, Iron Man would cross over into the Hulk series. I talked about that last week on the Hawk episode, and we would also see him a couple of times in the Spider-Man episode, uh, particularly once Spider-Man uh, got the Venom symbiote. And so, yeah, it's it was it was cool, and we also got sort of a, uh, towards the end of the series, we got an adaptation of the Secret War storyline with Yonder and uh, Madam Web, and so we got more characters. We saw uh, Storm from the X-Men get brought over. We saw some characters from the Fantastic Four get brought over, um, and it was really enjoyable then. Uh, but again, Iron Man series, uh, it, it, it's, it's a no for me overall. Again, season two, much better, but season one, a little too rough to get through, and I'm not really a fan of it. Uh, if you have Disney Plus and you're a Marvel super fan and a Marvel completionist, go ahead, check it out. But uh, I've warned you, season one, that's the one to avoid. You might you might just want to skip ahead to episode uh, 14. Uh, oh, on Disney Plus, before we go, I want to let you know that they mashed the first two seasons, the two seasons together into one, <coughs> excuse me, into one 26 episode season. Uh, season one had two episodes had uh, 13 episodes and season two had 13 episodes and so they just mashed them together same thing that they did with the hulk series just mashed both seasons together because they're so short that's going to do it for this review uh, i will catch you guys next time with another review um be sure to like share and subscribe to the channel follow me on all the social medias at jamel 727 i hope you guys have a great rest of your day take care of yourselves don't be an asshole and uh catch you guys next time peace